What's up guys, it's Diggo from the Foot and Fist Sports Network, back again to bring you some Premier League predictions. And after last weekend, I couldn't possibly be more excited. There were so many goals, so many interesting games, like between interesting storylines like Chelsea losing 3-2 to Burnley and Liverpool drawing 3-3 at the last second versus Watford. There were so many interesting things to talk about there, and there's so many interesting game things coming into this game, like with Fabregas and Cahill both red-carded. What does that mean for Chelsea versus Tottenham? There's so much to get into, so let's jump right into it with Swansea versus Manchester United. And for me being a United fan, honestly, I couldn't have been more happy with the performance from last weekend. Maybe the first 30 minutes were a little bit worrying, but after that, once the team started to gel and starting really, started really hitting their stride, it looked like we're going to be a very dangerous team all season long. I'm very happy with the performance, and overall, I look forward to this weekend because Swansea, you know, the big thing for them all summer long was... Are they going to be able to keep secrets in? Well, the answer is no. They just sold them to West Ham, to Everton, excuse me, for 40 million pounds. And that's a big loss for them. That is by far their best player, possibly their best player ever. And the fact that they lost their best Premier League player this late in the transfer window means that they're probably not going to be able to find a good replacement. If they do, they have 40 million pounds to spend. So they could possibly even bring in two good players. If they can do that, then possibly they can find a couple of people to carry the load that he left carry the weight that he left behind and if they do that they have a chance of staying in the Premier League but as of right now I stand my my prediction um, that they are going to be struggling big time and they could possibly get relegated we'll see I will see but right now I think that Man United are going to go out there and absolutely destroy them I'm going to stay a little bit humble because over the past what four years I would say Swan maybe even five Swansea have done pretty decently against United no they, I don't think they've been in there five years maybe four They've basically, what basically what has happened is, ever since Swansea came out to the Premier League, they won three games straight against United. And then United won three straight. That means United are on a three-game win streak against Swansea. And I think that this weekend it's going to be four. However, Swansea are one of those teams that at home play pretty decently, or at least are hard to break down. But I just don't think they're going to have anything to threaten United with, and United, without a doubt, are going to get some goals. I mean, just look at the team. Look how good they're playing in midfield. Look how offensive we are, right? I think we're just going to go out there and destroy them. I think it's going to be a 3-0 win. Probably could be more, but I'm going to stay humble. I'm going to go with 3-0. It's going to be a fun game to watch if you are a neutral fan or if you are a United fan. If you're a Swansea fan, I'm sorry, but we're going to destroy you. It's going to be a fun game, lots of goals, and we're just going to continue to see how this team gels, how this team develops, and what the hell is going to happen with Swansea? Are they going to be able to solve what what, what their problems are? I, I don't think they are. I think they're going to have a bad season, but let me know in the comment section down below. Next up, we have Bournemouth versus Watford, and this has the potential to be one of the best games of the weekend because there's going to be plenty of goals in this one. I see this going 2-2. Why? Because Watford against, against Liverpool showed they have a lot of attacking power. They're very good offensively, but in defense, they are shit. And against Bournemouth, that spells disaster because Bournemouth have Jermaine Defoe, they have King, they have quite a few other players that are pretty offensively dangerous. And I think that's going to be a very bad thing for Watford. However, Bournemouth also, they do struggle a little bit in defense. And Watford, who having a good offensive unit, I think that they will struggle. And I think that they will uh, concede a few goals to Watford. I think it's going to be a 2-2 draw, but I think it's going to be one of the best games of the weekend. Tons of goals, tons of drama, and it's going to be a very fun game, especially when it comes to mid-table teams, because you never know. One of these teams could possibly creep into the Europa League positions. Probably not, but it is an interesting game to see which team is already going to get an early escape from the relegation zone, especially because Watford have one point. I think Bournemouth uh, lost their first game, I think it was, against Stoke, so I think it's going to be an interesting one for them. Uh, no, not, not against Stoke. Who did they lose to? Maybe West Brom? Anyway, it's going to be an interesting thing to see what happens for these two mid-table teams. Next up, we have Southampton versus West Ham. And uh, this could possibly be the most boring game of the weekend. Honestly, I expect West Ham and Southampton to do better, much better than they did in that first game. West Ham got absolutely destroyed by Man United. Of course, that could only be because of the fact that United are so good. It's no sh There's no shame in losing to a team like United, especially that badly. But at the end of the day, when you look at West Ham's team, they should be doing better. They have better players than a 4-0 loss. And the biggest takeaway from that, in my opinion, there was actually two. Number one, they have not improved defensively. They have Zabaleta, who is an absolute liability over there. He was pretty good for, for City over the years. But that was with a team that doesn't really focus a lot on defending. His only job was pretty much attacking on the wings, being an extra attacker more than being a defender. 
At West Ham, he has to track back a lot. His main thing is going to be defending, especially against some of the bigger teams. I don't think he's going to be able to do that. He's too old. He's not expl- as explosive as he used to be. And he's simply not that good of a player. I don't think he's going to be that great for West Ham. He's going to be a liability, and they need to find a replacement for him. However, they just signed him. They just signed him. Is he going to play in place of maybe Mikel Antonio when he comes into the team? Is Antonio going to be playing forward? That Those are all things that remain to be seen. But as a right back, I think Zabaleta is more a liability than anything else. Whereas... Uh, Southampton, in that first game, they just didn't do anything. They didn't create anything. Is Van Dyke going to leave? Probably. He doesn't want to be there, and he could only be poisoning the locker room. They need to get rid of him. They need to get the right amount of money for him, obviously, but they do need to get rid of him and bring in a solid center back. However, against West Ham, I do think it's going to be a close game. I'm going with a 1-1 draw. Interesting one because of the fact that we're going to see what these two teams can can do against similar skilled teams, at least on paper. But West Ham definitely, being the better team of the two, should be able to at least get a draw away from home. And I do think that the the other takeaway that I had that I didn't mention is the fact that offensively West Ham don't have what it takes to really, I guess you could say, counterattack well when it comes to having a striker up front who can dish out play, you know, hold things up and really do some good passing like a player like maybe Morata is going to be able to do for Chelsea. West Ham, when they're going to be playing against teams that are much better than them, they're going to need a striker who can really hold up the ball, help the team, basically draw his own team forward, and create something. Chicharito doesn't have a good first touch. He doesn't have good passing. And overall, he doesn't have great vision when it comes to play. He's good at getting himself into good positions, but that's only when it comes to scoring goals. He isn't very good at providing assists and stuff like that. That's going to be a big problem for West Ham, especially because their 25 million pound signing, Arnautovic, looked absolutely atrocious against United. He didn't do anything whatsoever. He did absolutely nothing. And it looks like it could be a huge waste of money for the Hammers. I think it's going to be a close game. And there's going to be a few interesting storylines coming out of it. And we'll see what happens. Next up, we have Burnley versus West Brom. Which probably is going to be the most boring game of the weekend. And I say that with a grain of salt. Because I think that this is going to be a game between two very physical teams. And it's going to be interesting to see which one's come, which team comes to top. With West Brom, we obviously know that they're going to be playing very physical, long ball football, just classic Tony Pulis. And Burnley, for the most part, they play very similar. You know, they have some wing play, so they maybe throw in a bit, of, a few crosses here and there, but that's pretty much what West Brom does as well. The big thing for West Brom is that they just signed a player like Gareth Barry, who has really done a lot of good things overall in his career. You know, he was a mainstay for, Chelsea, for City for a very long time, so he has what it takes to even play at the top level. Not now. But in his prime, he was a Champions League level footballer. Maybe not a starter, <coughs> excuse me, but definitely a bench player. So he is a good signing for him. He's a very Tony Pulis esque signing because he is very good in defending. He's a central offensive midfielder who's very good at defending. Doesn't really bring much offensively, but that's not really his job. That's not what he's there for. He's just there to provide good defense, to provide good cover for his team, and that's exactly what he's going to be doing. Um, now, Burnley against Chelsea obviously got a huge 3 2 win. But I have to take that with a grain of salt because Chelsea were down to nine men at one point. I think the first goal that Chelsea scored on the comeback, Morata's goal, they were still ten men. But then the second goal, they were already at nine men. So that just shows that Burnley's defense is very bad. I mean, I stand by my predictions of them getting relegated because because of that very fact. I don't think that defensively they have what it takes to hold up against some of the better teams. And even against a team like West Brom, I don't think they're going to be able to go out there and get the win. Because yes, Vokes had a good game and Ward had a very tremendous goal. But against... A team like West Brom, where they're going, to be ba- they're going to be matched physically. I just think it's going to be a stalemate. It's going to be a 1-1 draw. Probably a pretty boring game, but it is going to be an interesting one because these are two teams that could potentially be in the relegation battle. And the winner of this one, if there is a winner, could definitely take a big step forward. Even though it's so early on, I think Burnley need to get as many results as possible early on before teams really start to gel if they want to have any chance of surviving. Next up, we have Leicester versus Brighton. And this could potentially be a pretty interesting game. Why? Well, because Brighton, even though they did lose 2-0 to City, they actually improved, uh, impressed me in a very big way. Up until like the 55th or, or 60th minute, more or less, they were holding their own. They weren't getting destroyed. Yes, City were, were creating a lot of chances, but that's what City do. That's exactly what they fucking do. They've done that every season for the past like five or six years. That's what they do. They create a lot of chances. The big thing is they weren't able to score a lot of goals against Brighton, which is something that most really, uh, newly promoted teams can say. They usually get absolutely dismantled as soon as they move up, and that's really something that you have to give them credit for. They managed to stay in the game against City, and they actually created a few good chances before conceding those goals, so maybe they got a little bit too cocky and opened themselves a little bit up, uh, opened themselves up a little bit too much. 
But at the end of the day, City got the win, and that does mean that Leicester have the chance to break them down, especially because Leicester play a lot more direct. They aren't like a City team who develop a lot of play with a lot of intricate play. No. Leicester go out there, they run straight at you, they play long balls, they play balls in behind the defense with Vardy hoping to chase them down. They have a lot of quick players, and it's going to be a good test for Brighton because, yes, playing against City, it's obviously an almost impossible task for them. But against a team like Leicester, who I would say are probably a top 10 team, but not necessarily a top 8, top 7, it's going to be a good test for them against a mid-range team. A a mid-range team who, granted, have a lot of offensive power. If Mahrez is in shape, if he's in form, then he's going to be a very dangerous player, and that could possibly be the end for Brighton in this match. But, obviously, going against Vardy, going against Mahrez, going against players, uh, even defensively against a player like Wes Morgan, who... He looked pretty decent in the first game, but he has so many problems. He just has so many defensive weaknesses. I mean, there's always a chance for Brighton to get a result in there, especially because Leicester, they tend to have some defensive issues. Last season, they had the same problems this season against Arsenal, who granted are a very offensively good team. They did show that they still have some holes. If Brighton can exploit them, then they will get a goal. I do think they will get one goal. I do think, though, that Leicester will score more. They will score two. It's going to be a very fun game. Very interesting test for Brighton at this level. Next up, we have Liverpool versus Crystal Palace, which has the potential to be a very fun game. Possibly also the best game of the weekend. I think it's going to be between them and the Watford game when it comes to pure entertainment. Why? Well, because Liverpool, like I already said, against Watford showed that they have a really good offensive team, but in defense, they remain garbage. They remain garbage. They've been garbage for the past few years, and they have simply have not found the ingredients to really fix that. That's going to be that's going to be their weakness. It always is, and it always will be, as long as they don't improve their fucking team. That's exactly what's going to happen right here. I do think they're going to score some goals over all season long. They're going to be a high-scoring team. But they're also going to have a lot of goals conceded. At the end of the day, that's going to be their weakness. It's going to be what breaks them down. That's, when, that's what's going to keep them from reaching the top four. We saw also against the, that they just played a game against Hoffenheim. I think it was Wednesday. Excuse me, Wednesday in the Champions League. So will that be will that be a problem for them? I think it probably will be because they don't have a lot of depth in their team. They don't have a lot of really good players that they can mix into the starting lineup against a team like this and really have a lot of like a lot of confidence in them. However, Crystal Palace just lost 3-0 to newly promoted Huddersfield, and you cannot underestimate how bad of a performance that was. I mean, it's one thing to lose 3-0 against City, Arsenal, etc., teams like that, but to lose against a newly promoted team, that's just atrocious. Now, I do think that Crystal Palace have a lot more a lot more potential than that game showed. You know, having players like Benteke, Zaha, Fozu Mensa on the right, having locked this cheek. The talent is there, especially against a team like Liverpool, who really struggle against counter-attacking teams. That's going to be a big problem for them. If Crystal Palace can exploit that because they have so much pace in those players, if they can exploit that, play on the counter-attack and not play your classic De Boer football, which is very slow build-up, uh, very horizontal, very Von hall esque football, if they play more direct, they have a chance. If they play horizontal shit, I don't expect them to do much of anything. It's all season long, especially this game against Liverpool. And I do think that if they play... I do think they will play counter-attacking football. I'm, I'm hoping that De Boer is smart enough tactically to understand that in this game, if they play that style, if they play their style of football, they simply don't have what it takes because that's, that's, that takes time to develop players like that. Last season, they were used to playing counter-attacking. They were used to playing long balls. Give them that chance. Let them play that style against the Liverpool team that's going to be pressing really high, going to be leaving space behind the defenders, and let them try to use their pace to get in behind the defenders and exploit them. Exploit them. Expose them. Do what Watford did. Just take a page out of their playbook and do that. If you do that, you'll possibly get a result. And I actually think that's going to happen. I think it's going to be another 2-2 draw. Uh, well, last last weekend was a 3-3 draw, so I, th- I think it's going to be another draw. 2-2, lots of goals, lots of fun, and overall as a neutral f- Well, I'm, I'm not really a neutral fan because I dislike Liverpool. I'm a United fan. But at the end of the day, you know, it is a game where United aren't playing. So I'm hoping for a lot of goals. I'm hoping, obviously, Liverpool drop points. And I just want a spectacular game. I do think that Watford will get a draw. Next up, we have Stoke versus Arsenal. Arsenal in that game against Leicester, like I've already mentioned, they looked really good offensively, but they looked absolutely piss poor defensively. And that's probably down to the fact that Murdersacker is injured. Uh, Mustafi's injured. Also, I think they have uh, Koscielny also out injured, which shocker there, right? Uh, so all their, all their defenders are out, which is the classic Arsenal situation. So they started off the season with a bang offensively, but also looking like the classic shit Arsenal they are defensively. If they don't fix that, they're going to have problems all season long. However, against a team like Stoke, 
who haven't really improved over the summer and don't really look like they have anything to really offer offensively or defensively. Anything There's there's nothing really in particular from them that has to worry teams. I don't think Arsenal will be too threatened by them. I think it's going to be Arsenal win 2-1, but it's going to be interesting to see if Arsenal's defense can hold a bit better this weekend. Is Murder Soccer going to be back? I mean, he just had a big cut over his head. I don't see why he can't play. Just put a band-aid over it and just play. I don't understand why he can't. Uh, maybe he's a bit of a pussy, but I don't know. He's German, so technically he's not going to be a pussy, but we'll see. We'll see if he does play. We'll see what Arsenal shows up. Are they going to still be playing that 3-5-2 or 3-5-1-2, whatever the hell they were playing? Uh, are, they gonna, are they still going to be trying to employ that formation? We'll see. It's interesting because we've never really seen Van Gare play that style, and if he does with the defenders he has, if they aren't back, if the main guys aren't back, he has the chance of conceding a few goals. I think he'll concede one. I think that Stoke will get at least one goal. They still have a player like Shakiri in there, and they still have a few good players here and there. But overall, I don't think they have what it takes to really do well this season. I think they're going to be doing worse, and I think that Arsenal will get the win here. It's going to be a 2-1 hard-fought win because at the Stadium of Light, you never have an easy time. They are still very physical, so they are going to make it rough for you. But Arsenal will get the W, will get the three points, and will continue their run of positive results. Next up, we have Huddersfield versus Newcastle, which could possibly be uh, an interesting game, especially because it's two newly promoted teams. And this has early implications for Premier League survival because whenever these two teams, whenever the... Um, the newly promoted teams, and even the teams that are battling for, or that are likely going to be battling for relegation zone, once they uh, once they come against each other, especially this early on, it's massive for both teams to get a result. Especially Newcastle, who just lost to Tottenham two 0 and Huddersfield, who are going to be having a head of steam after beating Crystal Palace three 0 It's going to be a very interesting battle, especially because Huddersfield at home, Newcastle don't tend to do very well away from home, and the last time these two teams played was a two win two one win for Huddersfield. That doesn't really mean much because that happened in the Champions League. I mean, the, cha the Champions League, they fucking wish. That happened in the Championship. And whenever you play in the Premier League, it's obviously very different. But I do think that West Ham... I mean, West Ham, what the fuck is up with me? I do think that Huddersfield probably are going to be, a, by a, a very small margin, the favorites in this game because they're playing at home. I think Newcastle will probably have the better team. They have a much better manager. But Huddersfield could potentially go out there and sleep again, steal the result. I don't think that's going to happen. I think Benitez... Playing away from home is going to favor the fact that he's going to be playing very defensively. He's going to be very careful, especially because John Joe Shelby is out with a red card. He doesn't really have a great uh, the quality of midfielder that he usually has. Uh, obviously, if they play the counterattack, they have a good, a decent chance. But I think that he's going to play very defensively and not really take a whole lot of risks. So it's going to be a 1-1 draw. Newcastle need to start getting points immediately or they're going to be finding themselves already among the pressure of being among the relegated teams. Now we have Tottenham versus Chelsea, which without a doubt is the biggest game of the weekend when it comes to the size of the clubs, and I do think it's going to be a huge test for Chelsea. Tottenham in that game against Newcastle, they didn't look their, their soaring best, but they are obviously one of the best teams in the league, if not the most offensively gifted team because of the way that they play as a unit and the way that they play so well. They, such, they play such good football, and, to, and Chelsea not having Fabregas, not having Cahill, and having gotten destroyed like that against Burnley, it really shows that they have a lot of weaknesses, especially because Conte, for some reason, isn't playing Morata as a starter. I expect after him getting a goal and an assist in that last game that he will be a starter. If he isn't, then this is just something wrong. There's just something wrong with Conte. I have no idea what the fuck he's playing at. Um, I do think it's going to be a very tough game for Chelsea because I don't think that they're going to have anywhere near what it takes to be able to battle with Tottenham. I mean, this season, I don't see them doing anything whatsoever. And against Tottenham, this early on, I just don't see how they're possibly going to be getting a result. Tottenham are just a much better team offensively. They're a way better team defensively, especially with all the injuries and red cards that Chelsea have. I mean, you have to remember, like, who else do they have out? Uh, they had last In the last game, they had to play Christensen. They had to play Boga. They had they played Batshuayi. So they just don't have a lot of really good players up front. And there's just not a whole lot of quality there. I think Pedro's out injured as well. So And they have a few players out with suspensions. Hazard was injured. I don't know if he's going to be back in this game as well. But they have a lot of losses, and I think that Tottenham are going to go out there and absolutely destroy them. They're going to impose their game. They're going to win 3-1. It's going to be a beatdown, and Chelsea are just going to look shit. They're going to have so many problems, and they're going to struggle so badly. And I think it's going to be an even worse situation for Chelsea because the pressure is going to be piling on more and more. Antonio Conte, he does not deal very well with pressure and with criticism and stuff like that. He really collapses. He, he just has a hard time dealing with it. He gets emotional, and when you're an emotional manager... You have a hard time keeping those emotions away from your players, and when you don't, when you aren't able to do that, you tend to cause a lot of problems in the locker room. And Antonio Conte has always been known as a very emotional guy, a very just psychopathic guy 
when it comes to how hard he works his players. That's not going to very that's not going to fare well with Chelsea, especially because we saw what happened with Jose Mourinho a few a, a couple years back. They do not exactly have a good record when it comes to being reliable players and players that really stand behind their manager. I think he's going to get sacked. I think this year he's going to get sacked. In this loss against Tottenham in a derby against a rival team, against a team that's probably going to be uh, pushing pushing to the very end for a title. I think that's going to be one of the final, final nails in the coffin for for Conte. I don't think he's going to get sacked, actually. I think he's probably going to walk away because he's a very prideful man. He walked away from Juventus. I think that's going to happen uh, with Chelsea once again because he doesn't have a very good relationship with Abramovich right now. He's already flirted with some of the other Italian teams like Inter, so I think he probably will walk away, stay away for a while. And if Inter struggle this, this season, I think he'll probably uh, replace the manager there and that's exactly what I think is going to happen with Conte. It's going to be a 3-1 loss here. Chelsea, uh, Tottenham are going to absolutely destroy him. And the one factor here that could possibly play into this is the fact that Tottenham at Wembley don't have a very solid record. I mean, last season when they played in the Champions League, they didn't look very good. But they prob- I, I personally think that they were probably just throwing the, the, the competition away a little bit. They didn't want to lose too much energy in that competition. But Wembley could be a big problem for them when it comes to the pressure and stuff like that. So that is something to take a notice of, but I do think they're going to absolutely destroy Chelsea. The last game we're going to be talking about here is Manchester City versus Everton. Now, Everton got a nice little 1-0 win against Stoke, but Stoke, realistically, is not Manchester City. I mean, Manchester City went out there and they had a good win against Brighton. They created a lot of chances. Yes, they didn't score. Um, they, at least it took them a long time to score. But they still look like the classic Manchester City getting a lot of goals and looking like a pretty good team. Actually, looking like a very good team. And obviously, they still have quite a few players that still have to gel. So there is that. They still have some time to really become a solid team and develop into one of the best teams in Europe. I do think that it's going to be a tough game for Everton. I don't see them winning. I don't see them even getting a draw. But I think that with the new style they play, if they play solid defense and play very well in the counterattack, they will create problems. And I do think that they will create problems. I think Wayne Rooney playing against Manchester City, he's going to be feeling the derby because, yes, he is a blue. He is Everton through and through. He's always been an Everton fan. But having spent, what, 13, 14 years with United, there's no doubt that he is going to feel the, the derby mentality. He is still going to have that rivalry with City. He's always expressed the fact that he doesn't like City. But, well, actually, he really hasn't. He was actually threatening to kind of sign with them. But still, I do think he's going to have that little bit of that Derby mentality, wanting to do his former club a favor. I think that he will get a goal in this game. Honestly, I think that he's going to free find his goal-scoring prowess with Everton being one of the main men, being a guy who doesn't have a lot of pressure on him, and just being in a team that overall really fits him. I think that's going to be perfect for him. I think he's going to get a goal against City, but it's not going to be enough. City are going to score two. It's going to be a 2-1 win. And overall, City really showed against Brighton that they, have, they also have a lot of heart because a lot of teams would have struggled especially because Brighton were getting a lot of chances there later on. I think they had a couple of chances within like 30 seconds of each other, maybe a minute. There was like a corner, then another corner right after that. They had uh, they had some chances where City looking like they were starting to you know, sort of shake a little bit and looking like the City of old probably would have collapsed, conceded at least one goal, and possibly even gone on to win like 3-1 or something like that. But still, they would have had a lot more of a hard time than they actually did. So hats off to the City in that sense. But I do think the City obviously are going to be one of the best teams in the Premier League, if not Europe. So they have to be respected, and I have, I do think that they will at home definitely have a very solid record. Guardiola is going to be, for the first time this season, obviously it's early doors, but for the first time this season, tested against a really good team. Because Everton, make no mistake about it, even though they did lose Lukaku, they've made some really good signings, and they are a very dangerous team. So it's going to be the first test for City this season, and if they pass it, obviously hats off to them. It's going to be a good, uh, a good result for them to get a result regardless. Now... If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button, please subscribe to the channel, and please share with anybody that you think is interested in this stuff. Uh, I don't know. The Premier League is just going to be so good this week, and I am getting a little bit tired <laughs> doing this video. It's a 25-minute talk session. I'm not used to doing these videos as long because the YouTube algorithm uh, actually favors people who do longer videos, so I'm trying to be a bit more detailed in my predictions and things like that in all my videos a bit more detailed so i can provide with longer content possibly have youtube help me out a little bit more because if you see some of my videos in the past when the algorithm was a bit shorter and things like that my videos were doing a lot better but now they're having a lot of i'm, I'm honestly guys i'm having a really hard time getting any viewership hopefully you guys will help me out and share this video hit the like button help me get some uh get some uh, get some youtube love basically Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video, which will definitely be the Premier League breakdown with the Premier League Aftermath show, excuse me, which will be coming out Monday or Tuesday, depending on how good my Wi-Fi is. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you then.